It's Shell C from Paper Rock Tea Studio, and today I'm sharing with you days 10, 11, 12 of our ATC a Day Challenge from the Art Joy of Sharing Art Community on Facebook. Uh, we also have a monthly challenge called the Mood Board, and it is a series of photos, colors sometimes, uh, to give you something to inspire you during the month. And this month, this is June, that's the Mood Board. So I just we decided today to do our ATCs inspired by the mood board. Now, when you use the mood board, you can just use a color or a shape. Um, you could use a general idea, like there's a bird on there, maybe you make some type of bird. You could um, use it in an abstract way or in a very literal way. And today I decided for my first card to use it in a very literal way. There's a little hummingbird on there and I have recently been feeding the hummingbirds in my backyard and there's several that come along and they do funny things. They have antics. And so that was the first thing I saw on the mood board. And I said, I'm going to draw a hummingbird and I'm going to paint it. So I started out with a piece of watercolor cardstock, I think, or it might just be, no, actually it's just packaging cardstock. I sometimes uh, make this type of cardstock, which has collage on both sides in a neutral color because I make art paper dolls. So if you guys have watched any of my videos where I make an uh, art doll, you know, articulated paper doll, I like them to be covered on both sides. I don't like them to have a plain back. So I'll take a piece of stock like this and I will um, collage on both sides. So this has, it was probably a scrap left over from a doll and I just cut it into the two and a half by three and a half inch size for a card because I had it left over. So it's got it's got collage, got neutral collage on both sides. I decided to pick this side. This has some uh, sewing patterned paper, uh, a little bit of a dictionary page or something down in the corner. So it's just, it's pretty, just neutral, has some interesting lines and I thought that that would be a good one to use. <clears throat> so I drew the hummingbird in flight like it is on the paper. And I'd used a mechanical pencil for that with a soft uh, graphite in it. Then I am using Neocolor 2 water soluble crayons. These are a product that's made in Switzerland and they're just, they're soft, not very waxy, a lot of pigment. These, of all the crayons, these are probably my favorites, but I have a lot of different types of this type of product. <clears throat> Could have also used watercolor. Basically what I'm ending up with is a watercolor look but I am a, I'm putting the pigment down first and then blending it with the water brush. <clears throat> At that point, my camera, which I had turned a certain way, decided it didn't want to be zoomed in, turned itself off. So I had to do it, put, turn it the other way and it's farther away. It can't be zoomed in. So sorry about that. I think it'd be nice to be zoomed in when you're watching someone make artist trading cards because they're so small. And I thought I had it figured out, but it ended up not working. And uh, so I put it back to the way it usually is, <laughs> further away. This was done during the Art Joy of Sharing live stream show, which we have every Thursday at 8.30 Pacific time. And so this is a replay of that in uh, fast mode. And I have to film with the second hand camera, which is my, I have to film with the second camera because... The first camera is filming the double screen, and if I want to make it for my channel, I need to not have the double screen with two people. I need to just have a single screen, so I have to use my camera to film, and that's, that's uh, you know, you got your front side camera, your back side camera. This is the front side camera. The back side camera is the one that I can zoom, and it just, it wouldn't stay on. It just kept turning off. So anyway, enough about that technical junk. <laughs> I colored the whole thing with the, the crayons and the water brush, and then I went around with my Pintel pocket brush, which is something that I just love. It's a it's an India ink brush pen with a little cartridges of India ink inside, and 
I just kind of drew around some illustration lines around the bird. And then I have these paper flowers. They're something I got from Michael's a long time ago. I have had a big bag of them and I just recently found them because I've been cleaning and reorganizing my studio. And I located this box of paper flowers. <laughs> so I decided to use them. I thought it would be nice to have a few flowers around the background because uh, of course, hummingbirds love flowers. That's what they eat all day. I was reading an article in a magazine and it said that they have to basically just eat all day. That's all they do is look for nectar and eat because of their metabolism being so high. I guess, I guess if I was flying around on little tiny wings like that, I would have to eat all day too. But I probably would like to eat all day because I like food. So... <laughs> The only problem with that is that you'd have to also cook all day, which is a whole different thing. So once I have those glued down and I used, I used PVA glue, I used tacky glue for that so that I could get them flat because these paper flowers are formed. And so they're kind of dimensional. So I wanted to make sure they were laying flat. I did a little shading around them with uh, some of the brown crayon. And then I put some gems on and that was day 10 of our hashtag ATC a day 2021 ATC AD 2021 is the hashtag. If you search that hashtag anywhere on social media, you'll come up with all kinds of art cards that you can see. And also of course, over in our art community on Facebook, people are posting them every day and um, also putting them in a file where they're all stored so you can search through them and look for inspiration. You can, you can join the group if you uh, use the link below the video and then answer the questions. Make sure that you answer the questions. If you don't answer the questions that pop up when you ask to join, we won't um, put you in the group because we need to know that everyone is a real person who wants to be there to, to share. And, uh, you know, it's about art. It's not about selling or self-promotion. So. That's the reason we do that. So for my next one, I had a card that I already had. Um, this was from a master board. If you guys don't know what a master board is, it's like a piece of paper. Like I usually wa use watercolor paper and I start putting all kinds of mixed media layers on. I usually start with some collage or maybe I start with some acrylic paint and maybe I do some stenciling and you know just all kinds of different layers to make this this large piece that, that can then be cut into smaller pieces and made into greeting cards or ATCs or tags or or um, index cards or whatever you want to make it into and that's what this was a small piece of that which was actually cut down so that it would have uh, another piece as a backing to make a little frame around it so I put the black stock on the back glued that on and then um, now I have a full size two and a half by three and a half piece, but it has a frame around the edge, which is a look that I enjoy. Then I had noticed okay, um, on the mood board, there is a moth, a brown moth in a picture. And I thought, well, since I went so literal with the hummingbird, I'll do the moth too. And when I was looking through that box of found uh, paper flowers, I noticed that in there, there was a package of little paper butterflies. And one of them happened to be brown, <laughs> stripy brown. And so I thought this is perfect. I can use that little butterfly, the brown butterflies, brown and white or whatever, to uh, make it look like this moth on this background, which is a similar color. Uh, there was some purple in the background. So I used a Stabilo Woody pencil to add a little bit of purple flowers to the background before I started gluing things down. And at first I was going to glue the butterfly open, you know, the two equal uh, sides open like it's flying towards you. And I decided I didn't really want that. I wanted it to look be looking from the side. And so I grabbed out another paper butterfly, which was just solid brown. And I layered the brown stripy one half onto the brown half um, slightly off-centered or, or slightly, what's that called? Typeset, uh, offset, <laughs> offset, slightly offset so that the brown is peeking out as if it's the, 
the other side, which has a little bit of shadow. And I went ahead and used the little gem as the body, which each one had a gem. And I used both of the little stick on gems to make the body. And then now I have some Fabric Castell Pit artist pins and I am doing a little bit of shading around all the things that I glued on. I put on a couple of those paper flowers as well because in the picture the moth is with what appears to be maybe a, th a thistle, maybe. And so I wanted to have a little bit of that same type of a look with floral stuff and then the moth or butterfly is on it. I took an uh, extra small nib black pin and drew in some little antenna and some legs um, so that it looks as if it's standing on the flower. And then uh, did like I did the shading around it. Then I decided it, that the flower needed a stem and some leaves. So I just used a white Posca pin, which is an acrylic paint pin, to draw in some leaf and stem shapes because the background is so dark that if I had drawn it with something else, you wouldn't really see it. And I'm also, as I'm doing that, using my water brush, my water tank brush to just kind of blend a little bit and fill in the leaves. It's just, uh, if you, you've got a couple seconds before that acrylic paint dries. Then I wanted to do something with the flowers to make them more interesting. And so I'm using my uh, pit pens to kind of darken the centers and make maybe some lines or uh, differentiation among the petals and then I thought I needed something in the center and I am going by the colors on the mood board so you got green you got turquoise you got off-white you got brown you got a little bit of uh, other color green because this time Peg put uh, the colors across the bottom so I thought that was cool so I am definitely looking at those and I think well Maybe I need some of that pinky peach color. Maybe I need some more brown. I uh, decided on the pinky peach color and I found a little punched out circle that's that's uh, got some paint on it that looks like a probably um, portrait pink maybe, blush color. And I glued that in the center. It has some text on it too. You'll be able to see when the close up comes. I glued that in the center, added a little bit more around the edge, and I think it's pretty good representation of the other picture. I was going to put stickers on their words, but I changed my mind. So you can see all the little steps that I'm talking about when it's up close and holding still for you, like in this picture. So moving on to the third one, I have another piece of background that has been gel printed onto some uh, cardboard, probably from a cereal box or something. And I used a stencil that is a, like a scribble writing stencil from Stencil Girl. You can't read it, but it kind of looks like writing, that type of a stencil. And so that's what the background started as. You can see it's just a piece of cardboard from like a cereal box or something. Macaroni and cheese, who knows? something <laughs> and I decided to just instead of thinking about what's in the pictures to just go with the colors this time more of an abstract look with some different pieces that I had on my desk I started out with the buff titanium color by using a piece of scrap book paper that has a little bit of writing on it you know I like having writing the graphics of writing is interesting to me um, then I have this that I, I put on a piece of napkin uh, that was turquoise and then I have this one which is a piece of tissue paper that has been stamped with black permanent ink. To put on these very thin papers like the tissue paper and the napkin I'm using uh, deco page napkin uh, glue from deco art. I like that for these really really thin fragile papers but I put one on top of the other but the the um, Turquoise is peeking out on one side from the napkin. It just it just adds more lines. Once again, you'll be able to see it so much better once the picture comes up. It's just too far away for these tiny cards. Then I wanted to add in some of the blush pink color. And so I'm using my Stabilo Woody pencils and coloring in and around this design, this swirly line design. You know, I like swirly line designs. That, that uh, rhymes. 
<laughs> I really do like swirly line designs. I draw them myself often, but um, this one was a stamp. And I'm blending that a little bit. I add the, the blush color and a pink color, just a little bit of turquoise here and there, some bright green from the woodies, just imitating these colors that are down across the bottom of the mood board. Then I had a few fibers on my desk that matched the colors, turquoise, green, and black. And so I decided to glue those on with some tacky glue. And I just put a line of tacky glue across and pressed the fibers down into it. This will dry clear. When, I mean, it, obviously it's going to dry clear. And yeah, I had used green ink around the edges to make a little bit of a frame green ink pad. I think it's olive green archival. Then I decided I really needed the swirly lines to be darker. So I'm using my Pentel pocket brush to go over them. This happens often to me when I stamp something. I just don't ever think it looks dark enough. Uh, if you use a misty tool, you can like stamp more than once. And then I feel like it's dark, you know, dark enough. But otherwise I t tend to run over them with my, with some type of a pen. So that time it, it was my Pentel Pocket brush pin. And then I also used some white Posca pin, acrylic paint pin, to add some highlights. So I hope you guys are enjoying this video. I hope you're playing along with our hashtag ATC a day, ATCAD2021. <laughs> and that um, I will be seeing your art in the group or in social media because that's always fun when everybody is, is swimming along in the same direction. So I was looking for something else to put on and I've been, like I said, I've been cleaning and organizing my studio and I found a little container full of these paint, acrylic paint boogers. <laughs> That's what I call them. That's kind of gross. Uh, when you have a tube of paint, when you put the cap back down, sometimes it creates this little circular blob where the paint dries there and makes this little shape and I thought well those are kind of cool that might be kind of cool so I had a copper colored one and a portrait pink one and a brown one and those were all colors I thought really went with this so I glued them down with my tacky glue and then one of these little fibers I decided to wind it into the the copper the larger copper one and so I just put glue down in there and wound that fiber into it. And I think in the picture, the glue might still be a little bit white, but it does dry clear. Then I took some copper paint and I did some splatters and that's it for day 12. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.